Hello everyone, this is Elvin, the CEO of Dr. Wealth, and I want to break down the deal that's going on right now, which is regarding APEC Realty. So if you are a shareholder, you might want to really check out what the deal is about. Because on the first place, in the first place, you feel that oh 57 cash offer while the share price is trading at 80.5 cents. This is ridiculous, right? Uh, but before you jump to that conclusion, let me explain what this deal is about. Then you have a better understanding what to do with it. And um, this cash offer actually came from Morgan Stanley Private Equity Asia. Um, they bought over 59.8% of APEC Realty from the previous largest shareholder, Northstar. Okay, both are private equity companies. That means they like to take companies private and they like to invest in private businesses. Um, they rarely, rarely, really just let the company stay listed. So um, later we'll talk about the delisting kind of a potential, right? But this is a major, major kind of deal that's going on. And because they bought 59.8% by the Singapore Code on takeovers and mergers, this Morgan Stanley Private Equity Asia need to also extend the offer to the other minority shareholders. This is to be fair, right? So they trigger this mandatory offer. So it is not like they want to offer to the rest. It's like by law, they have to, okay? And why 57 cents? The reason is because uh, the deal that tr transact be transacted between this Morgan Stanley Private Equity Asia and Northstar was at 61 cents, okay, which was already below the last trading price of 80.5 cents. Yeah, that is what the deal was struck and the deal went through, right? And in order for this offer to be fair to everybody, it has to be the same offer. So Morgan Stanley Private Equity Asia offer 57 cents to the rest of the shareholders. So it feels like, hey, there's a short of 4 cents. But because um, the deal, if you accept the deal, it will be likely after the XD date, which is the X dividend date, which means that you will receive the four cent dividends, which was previously declared by APEC Realty. And that means that if you add this four cents to the 57 cents, you'll get 61 cents. So that is how they came out with this 57 cents offer. It is equivalent to the 61 cents that they offered to Northstar. All right, because once Morgan Stanley Private Equity, the deal is done already, they are going to get a four cents. It's like a discount to the 61 cents. They are actually paying 57 cents to Northstar because Northstar no longer will get the dividends that's uh, coming. So uh, this is why that uh, a discrepancy on the surface looks like, but actually it isn't. It's just the same amount that was offered to Northstar. Okay, so uh, would shareholders be happy? The minority shareholders, right? I believe that they won't be happy because this is just too obviously lower than what the prevailing share price is. Uh, usually the offer is higher right, than the prevailing share price in order to entice shareholders to sell. And uh, we look at the history of APEC Realty, which they didn't really list for a long time since 2017. I'll talk about a bit of their history later. And the highest price ever transacted was $1.01. So this offer would be 44% lower than the highest price. And the lowest price transacted was 25 cents. It was during the COVID-19 low. And that is uh, the current price, offer price of 57 cents is 128% higher. Okay, so that's the range that we're talking about. And if we compare the IPO price, which is at 66 cents, this 57 cents is 14% lower. Okay, so um, you will get probably... I don't know, right? People who bought above that 57 cents, a good number of them, I, I would suppose, right? They wouldn't be very happy about that. And I don't think that was, they would sell. And likely for those who are also who bought below this 57 cents, as you can see, the black line is where I draw on the chart. That's the 57 cents offer, right? There are quite a number of transactions that happen below this 57 cents. Yes, they may be happier, but it doesn't mean that they can accept this 57 cents when they know that the share price is trading at 80.5 cents, right? They could have got a lot more. So either way, I think these two group of uh, uh, shareholders, they are unlikely to be happy with the price. They are unlikely to sell the stake to uh, Morgan Stanley Private Equity Asia, right? So that is my view, okay? And let's look at the milestone, right? Um, it, this APEC reality is not short of such um, corporate action, delisting, listing, delisting, listing, because they have did uh, a couple of times in the past. And uh, the previous rendition of this APEC reality was called Hersing Realty, which was IPO, first IPO in 1998. Okay, then about four years later, it was delisted at 141 million valuation. 
And shortly after, just one year later, the company was sold to Northstar for $130 million, right? So there was a discount after that. And uh, they, they repackaged, they restructured the company probably along the way. And four years later, in 2017, they listed APAC Realty as we know it today at an IPO valuation of $234 million. So uh, from that angle, it is actually an 80% gain for Northstar. And uh, the thing is that Northstar still held about 70% of the uh, shares in APEC Realty, even after they are listed, which is this point where I don't really understand because they are a private equity company, right? And they can use public market for exits. And I would thought that they would have sold a, a much sizable stake than to retain 70% of it. So, uh, uh, but that happened, right? And they held the stake until today, 2022. Then they sold that almost 60% stake to another private equity company, which is Morgan Stanley Private Equity Asia, which we are talking about right now, at a valuation of $202 million. So there was a dip in it, but there's still a good 55% gain from where uh, they first started. So this is what the uh, deal looked like in the past and what has trans uh, transpired in the earlier days of this APEC Realties uh, uh, milestones. Right? And... Definitely, as we talk about, they are private equity companies, which means they would definitely prefer to own private companies than to own listed companies. That's not their mandate, right? So which means that the tendency for uh, APEC Realty to stay listed is going to be short-lived, probably, okay? Um, uh, and it was mentioned in the offer that the offerer has the intention to delist the company. So it is open. Okay, we release open. But my view is that it is unlikely to delist using this offer. Just now, we already mentioned that you know, the minority shareholders are unlikely to share, uh, unlikely to sell, right? And we, let's look at the, the insider stake right now. And let's assume that all the parties, the insider parties, will act in concert. That includes the Morgan Stanley Private Equity Asia, that includes the management, and that includes Northstar. Right, so I did a sum. Uh, Morgan Stanley Private Equity Asia will now have the majority stake at sixty one point one percent, and the management currently will have nine percent, and North Star still have a bit of two point one percent thereabouts, and which means the total estimated stake in this insider group will be seventy two point two percent, and it is uh, prudent to assume that they will act in concert. If let's say there is a, a offer, a further offer to delist the company, right, then uh, they are likely to vote for that delisting, right? So uh, in order for them to delist, they need to at least cross the 90% mark, okay? They are quite, uh, I would say, uh, not that far, okay, because uh, uh, you just need about 18% or more uh, in order for them to delist the company, Okay, but they are unlikely to cross this mark with the current 57 cents offer. Okay, so I do think that uh, there is a chance that a higher offer would come. Okay, or the share price of APEC Realty falls a lot, right? Such that it makes 57 cents attractive. Okay, otherwise, I don't think this delisting will happen at this point in time. Okay, so I do think that. Uh, uh, Either the share price has to fall a lot or the offer has to be upped uh, at least more than what it is trading right now okay, in order to entice enough shareholders to sell and they can cross the 90% mark for the delisting to happen. Okay, So in conclusion, um, just want to let you understand that this, this is a mandatory offer and it was triggered due to uh, the new majority shareholder coming into APEC Realty, which is the Morgan Stanley Private Equity Asia. They bought a significant stake from it, and that triggered the mandatory offer clause under the takeover code. Okay, so that is by law. They have to uh, uh, comply to it, right? And why 57 cents is because that was the deal that was agreed with Northstar previously, and they are extending the same offer to the rest of the shareholders. Yes, Northstar and uh, Morgan Stanley private equity Asia settled on 61 cents, but because of the four cents that are incoming as dividend to shareholders, you need to minus that off and that's why you end up with 57 cents. Okay, so that is what the deal is, is uh, uh, based on the rules and regulation. Then, um, they, there is an intention to delist, but I don't think that with 57 cents, this offer is going to entice enough minority shareholders to uh, sell their shares okay but i do think that a future offer is very possible right or otherwise 
if there is a crash in the share price, then maybe they offer again at 57 cents. It looks more palatable. But at this point in time, where the trading share, uh, where the prevailing share price is about 80 cents, while the offer is at 57 cents, I just think that it's not enticing enough for any APEC Realty shareholders to really chip in their shares. Okay, so that is how this deal is about. I hope now you have a better understanding what's going on. You can make a more informed decision what to do with your shares, whether you want to accept the offer or not. And if you like this channel, if you like more analysis that can help you with your investment journey, do remember to like this video as well as most importantly, subscribe to the channel and you will not miss another analysis or update like this. I hope to see you again. Cheers.